In 2021, months after Joe Biden had been sworn in as president, Mike Pillow, who'd been spreading conspiracy theories about the presidential election being stolen from Donald Trump, made a striking claim. He was so confident that he had evidence showing that China interfered in the 2020 presidential election, he offered a $5 million reward to anyone who could prove him wrong. The stunt was part of a cyber symposium he was hosting in August of 2021. He named the contest, Prove Mike Wrong. Now, Mike, and if someone comes forward and says, this is BS, and I'm going to show you why, and he's going to show how what you're showing is not the truth and invalid, and you're going to give him the time to speak and show the evidence, this person will get $5 million, right? $5 million at that symposium. That'll be live streamed on GB. That's why we put up the $5 million, or I put up the $5 million myself. All right. Well, someone decided to take Mike up on that challenge. And now an arbitration panel has agreed that a man named Bob Zeidman did indeed prove Mike wrong. The Washington Post writes, quote, the panel said Zeidman, a computer forensics expert and 63-year-old Trump voter from Nevada, was entitled to the $5 million payout. Zeidman had examined Lindell's data and concluded not only did it not prove voter fraud, it also had no connection to the 2020 election. Lindell said in a text to the Post, they made a terribly wrong decision. This will be going to court. And Bob Zeidman, the winner of that contest, joins me now. Uh, it's good to have you on the program, Mr. Zeidman. Uh, congratulations on the finding in your favor. Um, let's start with just how you found yourself uh, entering the contest to begin with, how you he heard about it and, and why you did it. Sure. So, Chris, thanks for having me. Yeah, I actually was getting a lot of uh, pressure from friends because this is my field. I'm a forensic scientist and I testify in court. And they kept telling me, you need to go. Some of them said you might win $5 million. And my response was that if he's offering $5 million, he's got the proof, so I'm not going to win it. And anyway, three days of a conference is not enough time to examine all the data that he was allegedly uh showing or prevent presenting. Uh, but eventually I thought, well, this will, you know, this will be historic. In some sense or another, it'll be historic. Maybe it'll actually show that the election needs to be overturned. Uh, but whatever it shows, there'll be interesting people there and I'll get to meet them and hang out with them. So that's what initially got me the gave me the incentive to go. So you you do forensic analysis for a living. Uh, you you had friends who said you should go. You went to the symposium. He there's some group of files like what what actually was the evidence here well the, the, what was presented was a, a number of files and we were looking at them and i can tell you first of all we were we were selected everyone who came was a trump supporter including me mm -hmm. um look i mm -hmm. we can get into that i have problems with trump and i don't plan to vote for him next time but uh, you know he, they invited a lot of cyber experts who are Trump supporters, and everybody looked at this and said, mm -hmm. "This isn't what we expected. It's nothing about the election." Most of us didn't know what it was. But I started doing some simple transformations, and every time I did this transformation, I got something that I recognized. And eventually, I found that uh, most of the files were Word documents. Uh, one was a table of numbers that were basically meaningless. Another one was hundreds or thousands of pages where it looked like somebody had been randomly typing uh, letters into a document. But then there was a transformation, <laughs> several transformations done. So when it was handed to us, it looked like, oh, some kind of sophisticated computer data. And so within a few hours, I, uh, you know, I, I slipped out of the room where everybody was looking over the data. I went back to the hotel to write up a report and I called my wife and I, I talked to her quietly and I said, start thinking about what you want to do with $5 million. Because it was that evident to you that these files amounted to nothing that could remotely begin to show. I mean, these were from the internal files of, of voting machine. Like what, what even was the putative nature of the evidence? Well, it wasn't clear. Lindell had promised PCAPs, which are captures of packet data on the internet. Now, there's also just a, uh -huh. a logical question. How could somebody capture every packet on the internet and keep a file? I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. there's too much data. In the time we're speaking, there's probably more data than you could fit onto any hard drive in existence. But Liddell had it. He purchased it from someone who's not very reputable. 
And uh, but what, again, uh, what it turns out, it was in no recognizable format. And I was able to show, going to file by file, show that what the data actually was, and none of it was related so, to elections. Yeah, I want to just read uh, fr from this piece from The Washington Post reporting that the files provided to Zyman Yu and other experts were primarily text or PDF files. Zyman testified that one was a flowchart purporting to show how elections generally work. Another, when unencrypted, was a list of Internet IP addresses, and others were enormous files of what appeared to Zyman to be random numbers and letters. Now, you, you write up the report, and then did you think... You were going to, like, how did you think this was going to work? Was it like a novelty check? Was it going to be like a price of right kind of situation? Or do you think he would try to stiff you? What was your expectation? Well, so I registered a copyright. I filed my report with the U.S. Copyright Office because I figured, whether it was done on purpose or accidentally, the, the event was fairly disorganized. It, we didn't have an agenda. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it was, it was mm -hmm. Lindell speaking nonstop, where he'd invite people mm -hmm. up but didn't give them a chance to speak. So I thought they'd mm. lose it, and then I would challenge them that way. But instead, they actually kept it. It got to the right person, but they never responded until my I found some lawyers to take my case, and we wrote to Lindell, and they said, oh, no, you're, he failed the challenge, and they sent back a couple of pages of explanation about why I failed the challenge. I, I don't want to go into detail now, but it's pretty ludicrous. And it, I'm writing a book about it, but it didn't make any sense. So then we went to uh, arbitration as required by the agreement that I signed. And, uh, you know, the arbitrators didn't buy it. But I'll tell you, even through the arbitration, I've been through the system a lot. I think the American legal system is great. It's better than any other in the world. It allows David to take on Goliath, but it's not perfect. And I knew that there was a chance that somebody could say they don't like me or there was a law that somebody finds that I... I didn't adhere to this law. Mm -hmm. and, and an arbitration is a little bit arbitrary. So they can even do say things or, or, or make judgments that don't conform to the law. So I really didn't know up until yesterday whether I was going to win. I knew that I should have won. I knew that I, I I met the challenge because that was easy. But, uh, <laughs> you know, whether I was going to be awarded the money by the arbitrators was a little up in the air. Well, you were. Uh, it, it looks like it, it might be the first chapter in a long book, one which you will uh, be writing. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is really a wild story. And thank you for sharing with us tonight, Bob. Thank you for having me.